So Sonia, you're going to today show us how we can make our dreams come true. And so many of us uh, want that to happen. And well, of course, when we're talking about dreams, we don't talk about when you're sleeping at night and you're dreaming. We no. mean <laughs> things that you think about in life that you want to do to make yourself happy, right? Exactly, exactly. Everyone has a dream and how a dream life that they'd love to have. The question is, how do you achieve it? Right. And do you think that's what keeps us going each and every day? Is the hope that maybe one day our dreams yes. will come true? <laughs> I think for some people, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you have um, come up with some tips and advice for us on how we can make these dreams reality. And the right. first one you say is stick with it. Right. Whatever your dreams are, you need to stick with it. You never, ever, ever give up on your dreams. Ever. And how many of us say it's hopeless, it's not achievable, it's not possible, so just forget it and I'll just right. continue doing what I'm doing. Right. And if you believe that, then it's true. Okay. So stick with it. Yeah. You also say stop making excuses. Right. So a lot of times what happens is we have this dream for ourselves, whether it's a new job, a new career, having your own business, finding your soulmate, whatever it is. But then you don't go ahead and move forward or take action to actually make it happen because of reasons or excuses of why you cannot do that. So for instance, I know that I remember many years ago I went and worked as a destination representative. That's what I really wanted to do was work in Cuba and go there and just live in, you know, all winter long in Cuba in the tourism industry. The problem was that you needed to speak Spanish and I didn't speak Spanish. So most people at that point would say, well, I don't speak Spanish, so I can't do it. But instead, I thought of, what can I do in order to get this job? So, well, you know what? Um, I'm going to have the, I, I sent in my resume, and then I got the, I got the actual interview, and they said, okay, we're going interview, to interview, interview you, and then actually test your Spanish. Oh, no. Yeah, and I said, okay, no problem. And I thought, what, what can I do? And what I ended up doing is I asked myself, what questions could they possibly ask me in Spanish during the interview? And so it was things like, um, why do you want to become a destination representative? Why do you, th why do you want to work for this company? Company. Um, all these different questions I came up with, I gave it to my friend who speaks Spanish. She wrote it out for me and I memorized it. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm serious. And so I went to the interview. It was a risk. But hey, if you don't risk it, you never accomplish anything, right? right. So, so I did. I went there and I was so nervous. I remember before I went into the actual interview, I was went into, I said, can I use the restroom? And I went and I was in the stall and I'm memorizing, going over everything. I was so nervous. I didn't even care about the interview. It was the Spanish part that I was yes. worried about. And then I went for the interview and then they asked the first question. When they were ready to test me, they said, okay, Sonia, tell us why you want to be a destination representative. And I answered it because I had all the answers memorized in Spanish. And I was coached by my friend as well on the pronunciations and all that. Now, I actually ended up getting the job, believe it or not. And did you do the job? Well, see, see I knew for, I went for an interview in September, and then in December was when the job started. Right? So I knew that if I got the job, I better learn how to speak Spanish before I get there in December. And I did. I did the best I could. I mean, how much, you can't just learn a whole language in two months. But I did, and I listened to tapes, and I took a course. I took the time and got a tutor to help me, because I really wanted this so badly. And I ended up going to Cuba, worked um, as a destination representative and it was supposed to be just for that winter and it ended up being for four years. And you did it for four years? I worked in Cuba, Colombia and Mexico. For four years I worked as a representative and I speak Spanish now. And loved it the whole time you were doing it? I loved it and so but most people would stop at I don't speak Spanish and I so have to tell it. you this is what's really great is that when I was down there people would come up to me like the Canadian tourists would come up to me and say wow I love what you're doing I wish I could do that. I always think, and I was very young, I was in my 20s, and I just remember thinking, but you can't, you can't do, do that. I don't understand. So, no, I can't because I don't speak Spanish. And you're probably thinking, but all you need to do then is pick up a dictionary, go to some classes and learn it. It's, it's easy to do if you discipline yourself. Right. If you really want, want it bad, something bad, bad enough, you will learn it, and even if you have to work eight hours a day. 
and we all do that. And I think as you get older, you tend to forget this. So if there are people right now who are in that situation who don't have the job that they've always wanted to or who are saying, look, my kids are in school, I've got two little ones, it's not possible for me to possibly do the hours that they're asking. It, it all depends on how bad you want it because you can make it work. Right, and you might have to make some sacrifices, really think outside the box and try to figure out what can you do? Like I did, I was thinking outside the box. Like, what can I do? Okay, my best friend Paula speaks Spanish. Let me help have her write this all out and tutor me and help me with these questions. Something else you also say is don't compare yourselves to others. I do that all the time. And you know what, that's a bad thing to do, Sonia, because it can make you depressed and feel uh, like you're worthless. Right, but when I say that don't compare yourself to others, I also mean it in the reverse. You might look at someone and say, I want to do that. Well, you can do that or even more. This is your life. You have nothing to do with the other people around you. Or, like, for instance, if you know that you want to make $10 million, let's say, yes. okay, and you, the, the person you know in your life, the most is $1 million they made. And you're thinking, well, you know, you don't have to compare yourself to the million dollars. You're somebody completely different. So you need to be completely separate from everyone else. What are your dreams? What do you want? You know, a lot of times people start talking about statistics and the chances of that happening or the chances of you being a TV host or getting, a, you know, a, your own show are, are so slim. The chances of getting a publisher for your book is about 1%. People always do that and they, they don't mean any harm, but then you automatically feel deflated because you your do. chances are slim. Stop listening to that. Stop listening to that because you can be the exception to the rule. So stop listening to others. It doesn't matter. Don't compare yourself to others. Don't think of those statistics. You are you. If you didn't know those statistics, you would still go ahead full force you 100%. Would. So let it go. It's not going to help you anyway. What do you mean when you say stop playing it safe? Well, a lot of times what we do is we just live life every day, surviving, trying to make ends meet. And it's this treadmill that you're just running and running and running and not going anywhere and you have these big dreams and you're thinking okay well one day I'm going to or someday I'm going to start my own business or someday I'm going to go back to school and then in the end someday never happens because That's you're right. waiting for the stars to line up which they never do or you might be afraid to take any risks because what if you fail well you know what you might fail and if you do you fall down you get up and you continue you fall down you get up you continue and you adjust your path accordingly and eventually you'll get and reach your goal but if you don't try anything and you just play it safe to me, that's failure. Absolutely, I love it. And I love the whole thing about failures because I think with failures, we learn so much about ourselves. Right. Uh, something else you say, a vision board. I so believe in this. Well, a vision board is really great because it helps you focus on what you want to achieve in your life. So if you want to have a big home, if you want to have children, you want to meet your soulmate, you want to make a difference in the world, you just cut out pictures and you put it on a board. And it, you have to place it somewhere where it's a constant reminder. It could be at work, it could be at home, and so that way you're focusing on that. I'm a huge believer in the law of attraction, and what you, whatever you send out there, whatever your thoughts are, is what you're going to attract back into your life. So if you're thinking of these wonderful things that you want in your life, eventually opportunities will come to you for those things to actually happen. And it's interesting you say that because I remember the last time you and I spoke, we were talking about this off camera and you were telling me about the whole law of attraction and I remember thinking to you, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then I started to do what you had said and things were coming in like the next day, a couple days later, a week later, I'm like, Sonia is on to something right. here. Okay, it works. last but not least, you say do something. Right. Whatever your dreams are, you need to know what you want, you figured out what your dream is, and then every day just do something, anything that will get you a little bit closer to where you want to go and what you want to achieve. Don't look at the big fountain in front of you. Just take baby steps, little by little, and eventually you'll get there. Just you, do something. You also say that people should ask themselves certain questions. Right. Questions that you say like, what is your dream? Yeah, what is your dream? You need to first figure out what you want in order to achieve it, and most people don't take the time to even think about it. Is it okay to have a couple of dreams? Absolutely, and it's okay for your dreams to change as time goes on. Because they do do that. Right. In, like in your case, when you worked for Cuba and Mexico, right. and then that all changed, and now look at what you're doing. Uh, you say, how badly do you want it? Right. 
Do you want it really badly? Some people say they have this dream, but they're not willing to do what it takes to actually get it. Then maybe that's not really what your dream is, because you're not. It, you need to really want it badly enough to be able to make the sacrifices and do what it takes, and be motivated to take action to actually achieve it. Another question you say you should ask yourself: What is stopping you? Right. Excuses. What are your excuses? And you hear it all the time. I've got kids. I can't do it. I've I got don't a have money. To pay. When I have money, yeah, absolutely. We make up all kinds of reasons. I mean, they're valid reasons. But the question you need to ask yourself is, okay, what can I do that is outside the box that can help me overcome these obstacles that are in my way right now? Another one you say is, what do you need to make it? It, reality, which you just talked about. Right. Uh, what outside the box you talked about? Uh, steps can you take to get closer to achieving your dream? And then, of course, you say take action. Right. Well, it's all great to dream what you want to do. It's great to do a vision board, but you know what? You still need to take action. And sometimes things do land in your lap, by the way. But most of the time, usually these opportunities come to you, and then you need to take action and actually make it happen. Right, because you hear so many people who will say, I, I don't believe so-and-so just got that. You know, I've worked so hard, right. and it just falls in their lap, and I have to continue working. But you know what? Sometimes that's the way it is. Right. Exactly. And just deal with it. Now, uh, before we let you go, got to talk about your workshops because you yes. are always there to help people right. out. Right. Right. I have workshops. Um, you can go to my website at www.leadoutloud.ca. I have uh, one day workshops, weekend workshops, and it's all about shifting your mind and truly making your dreams come true. And I also have a home study for those of you who don't really like, you know, if people don't like to go to workshops and they rather do it in their home, I have an online home study program called the Shift 21 Day Challenge. To help as people well. out. So Sonia, thank you so much, and congratulations because the paperback just came out on the Law of Attraction. Yes, I'm very thank excited. You. And of course, you can read more on Sonia by purchasing a copy of her book, The Law of Attraction, Plain and Simple, Create the Extraordinary Life that You Deserve, available now in bookstores.